excellent day, my dear grade 11 students. Welcome to Bamboo Tele Escuela. This is your teacher on air in reading and writing skills. I am teacher Rose Ann B. Manuel from Hawaiian City National High School, Maine. Please allow me to be part of your learning journey in enhancing your skills in reading and writing. Please do not forget to tune in to DWNDFM, CMD Cable, and SDO Hawaiian Facebook page for live streaming. In the previous lesson, you have learned that organization, coherence, and cohesion, language use, and mechanics play a very significant role in developing a well-written text. After learning the properties of a well-written text, it is important to connect it to hypertext so that it will be easier for you to use connections to other locations that you may find interesting and useful with your readings. My dear students, we are now on the fourth quarter of the second semester for this school year. For this lesson, you will be learning about context of text development, which includes hypertext and intertext. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to first, define hypertext and intertext. Second, identify the different functions of hypertext and intertext and its importance. Don't you know that there is always an inspiration behind the writing of a text? And often, it leaves clues about the situation or the reality that serves as its backdrop. This backdrop, this situation, this reality is known as the context of the text development. Being a critical reader also involves an understanding that texts are always developed in a certain context. A text is neither written nor read in a vacuum. Its meaning and interpretation are affected by a given set of circumstances. Thus, context is defined as the social, cultural, political, historical, and other related circumstances that surround the text and form the terms from which it can be better understood and evaluated. Knowledge of the text context helps in appreciating the text message more deeply. In discovering a reading context, you may ask questions like, when was the work written? Second, what were the circumstances that produced it? Third, what issues does it deal with? Context is important because it helps you connect and create a relationship with the reader. It helps you communicate your point of view clearly, making it easier to understand. It allows you and others to be more creative. Indeed, one of the recent developments in reading has been brought about by the advancement of technology. Think of the technological advancements that you're familiar with. Desktop, smartphone, tablet, laptop. Which of the following do you have? Perhaps you have most of those gadgets or at least have seen and used them. If you did and you have read text to the said gadgets, you may have noticed that some web pages have text that have hyperlinks which are normally underlined and in blue color. Take a look at the illustration here. Based on the illustration, what are the words with hyperlinks? Correct! They are symbolic shadow, Emancipation Proclamation, Withering Injustice, and Joyous Daybreak. What happens when you click those words? That's right! They will give you information about them. That is what we call hypertext. Hypertext is text displayed on a computer display or other electronic devices with references or hyperlinks to other texts 
which the reader can immediately access or where text can be revealed progressively at multiple levels of details. Here's another example of hypertext. So what happens when we shift to different texts? Hypertext connects topics on a screen to related information, graphics, pages, and music. Information is not simply related to the text. This information appears as links and is usually accessed by clicking. The reader can jump to more information about a topic, which in turn may have more links. This opens up the reader to a wider horizon of information or to a new direction. The World Wide Web or WWW is a global hypertext system of information residing on servers link across the internet. Hypertext is the foundation of World Wide Web enabling users to click on link to obtain more information on a subsequent page on the same site or from website anywhere in the world. The term hypertext was coined by Ted Nelson in 1963. My dear learners, always remember that hypertext allows you as readers to access information particularly suited to your needs. For example, if you still need more background on a particular item that the text is discussing, such as when you do not know a particular term being used, you can choose to highlight the term and access a page that defines the term and describes it. Most web browsers display the URL of a web page above the page in an address bar. A typical URL has this form. Today, links are not just limited to text or documents but may also incorporate other forms of multimedia such as images, audio, and videos that stimulate more senses. This is called hypermedia. Now the question is, why is hypertext important? First, in a hypertext system, the reader is free to navigate information by exploring the connections provided. Second, hypertext has different way of presenting information than the usual linear form. Third, text no longer flows in a straight line through a book. Instead, it is broken down into many smaller units, lectures to borrow a term from literary criticism, each addressing a few issues. Lastly, it acts as a bridge between two basic, opposite, and complementing elements that may be called gender of knowledge representation, free and shortcut. Moving on, another important technique in analyzing the context of a text development is defining its intertextual link to another text. That is what we call intertextuality or intertext. Intertextuality or intertext is one method of text development that enables the author to make another text based on another text. It happens when some properties of an original text are incorporated in the text that is created by another author. One good reason why it occurs is perhaps the second writer is greatly affected or influenced by the first writer leading to a combination of imitation and creation. Intertext or intertextuality is technically defined as a process of text development that merges two or more processes such as imitation and creation in doing a text. 
it involves imitation because the author, as highly influenced by another author, comes up with his own version of the text consciously or unconsciously, incorporating the style and other characteristics of the text done by the author. Intertextuality has rooted from the work of a Swiss linguist, Ferdinand de Saussure, from 1857 to 1930. Meanwhile, the term itself was first used by Bulgarian-French philosopher and psychoanalyst Julia Pisteva in the 1960s. Intertextuality is said to take place using four common specific methods, namely parody, passage, quotation, and allusion. Parody. A parody is a work that mimics the style of another work, artist, or genre, in an exaggerated way, usually for comic effect. Pastiche. Pastiche is a text that is written in respectful imitation of a different work or written as a combination of many former styles without making fun of it, unlike in a parody. Next is quotation. It is a method of directly lifting the exact statements or set of words from a text that another author has made. Allusion. In this method, a writer or speaker explicitly or implicitly pertains to an idea or passage found in another text without the use of quotation. In identifying intertext, you may ask questions like, are there two or more stories involved? Does the text show a direct or an indirect connection to another piece of work? If the reader has affirmation towards these questions, the text he or she is dealing with contains intertext. For you to better understand the advantages and disadvantages of hypertext and intertext, please watch this speech clip.
the big picture of what we have discussed. Hypertext is a method that enables an individual to make bits of information more accessible to the readers by taking advantage of technology. On the other hand, recognizing and understanding intertextuality leads to a much richer reading experience which invites new interpretations as it brings another context, idea, story into the text at hand. It also provides one way for students to compose their own texts drawn from their knowledge of others. Further discussion about intertext and its examples will be discussed on air in the next episode. That concludes our first lesson for the fourth quarter, Hypertext and Intertext as Context of Text Development. Once again, this has been Teacher Rose Ann, your reading and writing skills teacher on air. I hope you gained an understanding of the concept presented in this session. See you again next time, only here at Bamboo Teleskuela. Thank you for tuning in. Keep safe and have a blessed day, everyone.